All right, everybody, so this is day two. Yesterday, we kind of opened up, hit film, and started. If you have not watched yesterday's uh, how to edit and hit film, I would highly recommend going back to it so you can catch up. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about your assignment first, and then we're going to check off the list in the um, actual hit film project. So here's what your final video will have to have. It'll have to be exported as an MP4 so I can read it or watch it. It must have four separate video clips edited together. So that means you need to take, you, I don't want one long clip cut up four times. I want four separate video clips so I know that you know how to bring them in use the trimmer four times um, must have music must have one sound effect must have a title card which is pretty much like the beginning of it what is the movie called must have at least two uh, video transitions and one audio transition and then you must cite the music if you used it from Ben sound or if it was from your own library so if you use any copyright music you have to say the artist and the name of the song must use at least one filter and must have the, a speed or direction of changed of at least one clip. If you're using splice, you can't change the direction most likely, but if you're using hit film, you can, and we're going to talk about how to do that today. And then it must be at least 15 seconds long. And so this is just like, how can you make 15 seconds interesting? You can also use some little cheaters. You can make your title cards go at the end on a black screen, and you can make your um, title card at the beginning be on a black screen. So let's look at hit film. So one thing that has happened in my hit film is it's a l running a little bit slow. So as you can see, like it's kind of jittery. It doesn't show it super well. So like you can see my dog kind of jumping. That's not going to happen when I export it. And I'm going to do a quick export um, at the end and show you what it looks like you can actually export your video several times to see it if you're having if you're not able to see what it looks like which I know is a little cumbersome if your computer isn't running as fast but I'm pretty sure my computer is about to die and that's why it's jittery like this and I can't see it moving at the speed it needs to run so as you can see I didn't have just a picture of a cow all right, so now let's go into the transitions. Let's do that first. So, oopsies. Uh, so let's go to effects. And if you go to, I'm going to just close these up. If you go down to the T's in these, you'll find transitions. This is something else I want you to do after I'm done with this. Go through and play with these. Now, if you have something that says add-on, that means that you'd have to pay for it. Or if it's a, it might be a VHS or a VFX package that you would have to pay for but if it doesn't have it you should be able to use it without any issues so let's go back to um, transitions so if I open up my video transitions here are a bunch of different ones and here the, each one of these folders open up whenever you see a folder with an arrow going to the side and this goes for any device um, even if you're online or using other programs if you push on that arrow it'll drop box down to give you more options so let's go to push we're going to use put that there and then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take an iris and all you have to do is drag it right onto the clip and if you want it to be a transition make sure that it overlaps both clips as you can see here it's not just on one it overlaps the two I don't know if it'll show you yeah see there it's like an iris opening up for it uh, this is then a I don't know what it, this one is this one was a push so it'll go across and the transition will go that way. So that is how you use the transitions, as you can see. it. That's actually like a Star Wars transition. If you've ever watched the original Star Wars movies, they do a lot of push uh, screen effects in it. All right, so um, that is video transitions. Audio transitions, this is good for, especially if you want your audio to like come in. So I'm gonna delete this real quick. If you wanna delete something, all you have to do is click on the transition and press delete and it'll go away. Um, same with these. If you wanted to get rid of these, all I have to do is select them and then click delete. So um, listen to this. It just pops in. It's a little bit abrasive. So I'm going to bring this in here. And now see how it zooms in. That is an audio transition. This is good for, especially if you're like doing transitions in it and you're using different songs, this will help to make the transition from one song to the next a little less jarring. All right, so... As you can see, I put in my title card. Remember, to put in title cards, you use the A and you click and then you just type. So just a reflection on that. All right, so let's check on the box again. What do we have? All right, so must have music. So I've already added in my music, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So you go to media and you can go to import and you can find it in your music and just bring it in from iTunes. Or if you have drug and dropped it onto your desktop, 
you can then just go to your library like this and you can then just drag oopsies it took a little too much you can just drag and drop your music in like that and that's all you have to do once you have found your music I'm using glitter and gold you can trim it the same way you trim your video now you can't actually trim your audio like this in Premiere this is something that only works with HitFilm which I almost think makes HitFilm just a little bit better for some of their trimming effects and some of their like green screen effects are actually way more intuitive on HitFilm than they are in Premiere um, which is frustrating because I usually use Premiere all right, so um, I've cut down how much of the clip I want to bring in so I don't bring in the whole thing. Just so you know, and this is a common mistake new filmmakers make, is if you drag in the entire um, like three minutes of audio, your film will keep playing for the entire audio. It's not going to stop playing as soon as you're done with your last clip. You're going to keep going until the audio has gone, so you might have like a three minute video even though you only have 15 seconds of film so if you want to cut down I'd say take about a few seconds of after the film itself so you have a little bit of a fade to black you take the cut tool which looks like this little razor blade fun fact it's actually shaped like a razor blade because when they were actually using um, physical film they did use razor blades to cut the film apart then you use the selector tool highlight it pink and press delete so that is how you can then cut it down so your film isn't um, just continuing on forever and ever. Uh, so that is how you add in music. Sound effects work the same way. I'm not going to waste your time with sound effects. All you have to do is drag and drop your sound effect and then drag it into it and just match it up. It's the same as, uh, same exact thing as um, your songs. The only thing I would suggest is watch out to make sure, let's say I take this whole song and I drag it. If I drag it over top of my glitter and gold, it's going to overpower it. So if you take a sound effect and you lay it on, your music's going to cut out and be overlaid. So like listen to this, it'll sound like this. It'll be like... So as you can see, it's you want to make sure that it's on a different layer. So I'm going to control Z that and watch if you drag your music on. Come on. Click. Drag. Sometimes it's a little cumbersome. We're just going to take this one because apparently that one's... You drag it onto a new layer. Which is being clunky. Technology is great when it works. Huh. Anyway. That's how it works, but I don't know why it's not working right now. Either way, make sure that your um, audio is on a different... Um, layer than your film. If you have trouble with it, if it will not, if it's doing the same thing that it was doing for me, like I could not, it seems to not allow me to add another uh, layer of sound. If it's doing that, don't worry about it. We'll figure out what's going on a little bit later. The most important part is make sure you have continuous so sound and song going through it because that's going to tie your whole film together. Music can do wonders for your film. All right, so we're going to go to filters now. So same place that you found your audio transition and this really fun area of effects, you're then going to go down to, um, you could go to uh, presets. And if you go into presets, you can go into film looks. And once you go into film looks, you can then take these and drag them right onto your film like that. And see how it's now this like creepy blue. Look at what it was before. So deepest blue, that's one of them. Another one that's kind of a fun one is, um, where did it go? Uh, nuclear sun. So you drag it in. And look at how it kind of changes things now because it's free sometimes these presets it'll put a watermark on it then um, just so you are aware that's the only time hit film will start putting watermarks so if you don't want this just go through and see if you can find one that doesn't have it so hit film has to pay the bills some way but it's pretty nice that they let you do all of this without it but if you don't if you can't find any there you actually have some lights and some flares so you've got glow um, here's neon glow, so if you put that one in, it's got this weird effect. Now you can actually control the intensity of that too, so you can kind of make some interesting effects that way. But otherwise, control Z, 
goes backwards. So if you ever find yourself in a jam where you don't know what to do or it's not working for you, just Control Z will go back or Command Z if you're using a Mac. All right, so that's how you, I want to see at least one filter on one of your clips. Otherwise, you can put filters on all of them. You can get wild with this. Remember, this is your dream meme video. You can do whatever you want. All right, so we had our audio transition, our two. We have our title card, which is horses. We have our sound effect, which I didn't put in, but that's okay. Um, but I have my music. Um, I am not going to write this in because you know how to type, so you just know that you need to add that. We talked about filters. Oh, okay, now here we're going to go to changing the um, speed or duration. Remember, to change the speed, you right-click and you go to speed and duration. The lower you put the number, <clears throat> the slower it'll go, the higher, the faster you'll go. But to change the direction, you're going to go type in reverse, and you can actually change the audio and the time reverse. And so you can have it going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to drag it in. So now when we watch this, these horses are going to be running the opposite direction. So I'm going to actually do this one too. I'm going to put time reverse on this. So you can see um, what it can make a really interesting effect where you can create it look like and make it go back and forth, like forward, rewind, and backwards. It'll kind of make it an interesting um, just kind of add something to your film, especially if you only have B-roll. Like if you went to that stock footage site, um, having some of it go forwards and backwards will kind of keep the interest of your viewer. All right, and at least 15 seconds long. So if I added in my title card, I'd probably hit that 15 second mark. Right now, my film with the music is, it's about 12 seconds long so if I added a three second clip in there of sound or if I added my title card at the beginning without it it would be fine so I'm just gonna write in right here um, uh, I'm just gonna write in credits so I'm not gonna change the size remember to change the size though you go into your uh, text and you can change all of your stuff there but I'm gonna drag this over so it's a little oopsies drag it so it's a little longer. I'm going to drag also if you want to this little green guy this is a special trimmer too so if you don't want to just like copy and paste it you can actually take this hold down drag out and it will actually extend the clip. If there's no clip to extend though it won't make a clip so just kind of be aware of that. So I can actually bring it out a little bit. So the other thing is if you ever want to fade to black all you have to do is just leave your screen blank because the black is the natural um, effect that it will have. It's not, it's not going to have a checkered background. So if you want just a fade to black, just leave it blank. All right, so I've got my change in speed and duration. I've got re uh, reverse. I've got a filter. Check your checklist before you export. Do you have everything you need in your video? Now, here we go. I have just about everything I need. I'm not going to play around with it too much because I don't want to waste your time. And so what you're going to do now is you're going to go to export. So right now you're in viewer. This is your uh, canvas. This is your final product. So I'm going to click on my editor box so it's highlighted. You want to see this orange line here and here. And you're going to go to export. So now I've got this. <clears throat> I'm going to go to this button right here. So you saw I have the export button open. I have this highlighted. And then this is now accessible. I click on export. And then I'm going to name it. And it's going to go to somewhere I can find it. So I want it to go to my desktop so I don't lose it. So I'm just going to call this Horsies. I'm going to save it. And now it's starting. So as soon as you press export, it's super easy. Like just a button right here. As soon as you have that, it starts exporting, and then it's going to go to your desktop. I'm going to pause while it's doing that so it doesn't. we're not just waiting for something to export, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. Let you know that it's now been about 20 minutes, and I'm only at 65%. It is okay if your video takes a while to export. That is all part of it. My video is a little higher uh, megapixel, and it's shot at 120 frames per second, so it will take longer to process. But, like if you take, took video with your iPhone that's only at 1080 and you were working maybe 
um, not with no higher than 30 frames per second, you might have a different situation. So I just want to let you know that. So as you can see, here they are. So notice how the horses go backward and forward in slow motion. Here are some transitions. Here's what it sounds like.